last episode. the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry raw and uncut productions Uh, perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-385024 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others, just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have that you are in my life, all that you've done for thy service, Lord, you're just so wonderful, you're just so wonderful, I can't think of how was my life to be without you, as long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind, this is my prayer, sometimes I don't have And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., uh, and I'm coming to you by way of television, praise the Lord, and for those that are on Facebook live as well in YouTube or whatever country, state, city, county, town, village, outhouse, wherever you're watching it from, may the Lord bless you. Please hold the ministry up in prayer. I first give an honor to God, who is the Lord of my life, of course, and the one who appointed me 
in the office of apostle. Secondarily, prophet. we're trying to wind down for the end of the year word. You know, at the end of the year, the Lord uses us to give a prophetic word um, to the cities or to the people that's watching and so forth. But anyway, I don't want to get stay on that because it's very important. This is a very important broadcast. It's dealing with demonology. A lot of people uh, are not into demonology. They don't understand it. That's why they get beat up. They don't know how to fight their enemy. And demonology is the focal point of this ministry. The focal point was demonology because that's how the Lord, he uses me to teach on demonology and to expose the enemy uh, how to be delivered and uh, free from all kind of bondage and things. And so thus this being a deliverance ministry. So uh, it's very important that you pay attention to this. I pray that you have your Bibles, that you have some pens and paper and get into this because this, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. This is going to be a very powerful lesson. Now, before we get into it, let's open up with a word of prayer. Now, I'm standing here, uh, but the Lord said, take off my shoes because I'm standing on holy ground. So excuse me for a minute. I take off my shoes and... And now, let's go into a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you asking you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Forgive us, Lord, for any and everything that we have said, done, thought, and felt that's not pleasing in your sight. Any way that we have hindered our own blessings. Any way that we are hindering our own season. Any way, oh Lord, that we are hindering our own growth. We ask that you forgive us. Lord, just forgive us. We don't know no better. We, we, we just keep messing up. We're trying to do right, but we're messing up. So Lord, please forgive us. You said in 1 John 1 and 9 that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just. If we confess our faults, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm asking you to make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. And right now I'm excited. I, I, I feel like running. I feel like jumping. I feel like standing on top of the, the podium and doing a pair away. <laughs> but Lord, I can't do that. I, I'm just excited right now. And I ask that you, that you calm me down. That you moderate the anointing of my life. And that you use me after making me usable. And use me. And you do the teaching. Allow me to decrease that you may increase. And while you're ministering to your people, whilst on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, whilst on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, 
tried and true and with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary Lord for you Father in Jesus name please please feed us please talk to us please empower us <laughs> Satan we rebuke you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Not on our own power, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, we rebuke you. We bind you in Jesus' name. We bind you in the earth realm because you're already bound in the heavenlies. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. We loose all of our stuff from your grip. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our stuff as a covering so you can't touch it no more. Every blessing that God has for us, every vision that God has shown us, every word that God has revealed unto us, the blessings that he's bringing upon us as the year closes and as the new year comes in. We plead the blood over these things. And we command you to go back to the pit of hell from where you came. And come back, not hither, in Jesus' name. And every demon that works for you, it don't matter their name. It don't matter their rank. It don't matter. We plead the blood against them. And we cast them out of our life and our affairs. We loose our stuff from their grip as well. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our stuff as a covering. And we claim the victory. We command those demons to go back to the pit of hell also. And we plead the blood against them that they don't come back this way in our life no more. Father, we ask in Jesus' name, that you dispense heavenly angels to come into the earth realm where we are, that they may take up that place that those demons were in. And we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you for the victory. Whatever your children are praying for, whether they're watching by television, whether they're watching by YouTube, whether they're watching by Facebook Live or Google Plus or Instagram or wherever they're watching from, whatever city, state or town or country, whatever they pray according to your will, this ministry touches and agrees with them that you be in the midst. And now, Father, talk to us. We are waiting to hear from you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh, glory. Turn your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 9. And this is a very, very, familiar scripture and though the Lord has used us to fellowship in this scripture over the years and on more than one occasion though some of you that are in leadership have been used by God to minister this word as well I'm not talking to the copycats I'm not talking to the Facebook celebrities who came in ministry once they click join on Facebook. I'm talking to those that the Holy Ghost has called, chosen, and set over a work. <laughs> That's what I'm talking to. Though you have been used by God to handle this scripture on more than one occasion, let's walk together in it now. 
And see, the thing is, it don't matter who's watching. You know, people try to copy you when they see God use you, but I'm not worried about that. They say that uh, imitation is flattery or something like that, but I'm not even paying no attention to that. Because one thing that you, brother and sister minister, must realize is that no one can copy you. They can try, but it won't work. They can talk like you, but it won't work. They can pray like you, but it won't work. They can sing like you, but it won't work. They can try to preach like you, but it won't work. They can do every gesture you do. If you do like this, they can do it too, mm, but it won't work. If you go this way, they can go that way, but it won't work. Because the best you is you. Remember that. Be encouraged. Mark chapter 9. And we are going to jump into the 14th verse. And we're going to read scripture not as a storybook, but as an instruction manual. We're going to be articulate about this. We are going to read in educated fashion where we see a comma we're gonna pause where we see a period we're gonna stop where we see a colon and a semicolon we're gonna acknowledge that and respect the position of the punctuation not only that but when we see an italicized word we're going to emphasize it again for two reasons the spiritual well let's go this way the natural reason because when the translators translated it from the Hebrew of his Old Testament and from the Greek of his New Testament, that word wasn't there. So they inserted it to give it context and they italicized it. The spiritual reason for it is because when God anointed them to translate it, he said, emphasize this word. And it gives it context. And there's meat in that word. So this is how we're going to read. So let's first read the scripture. Uh, we got two scriptures we're going to read. We're going to read this Mark chapter 9 verses 14 through probably 32, but I'm seeing 29. And then my, one of my favorite scriptures, which is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 and 12. Now, Mark chapter 9 verse 14. Let's get into this. And when he came to his disciples, I'm in the King James Version, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Now I'm standing here at this ministry. We have an extensive library. You see some of the books here under this podium. There's a couple of shelves of books in my bedroom. There's several, uh, a few, quite a few bookcases with with all kinds of books. I mean, we have an extensive library. So if we need to go into an NIV or an Amplified or an ESV or a Phillips or whatever, we'll, you'll see me reach. And when you see me reach, that's all it is. No tricks up my sleeve, nothing at all. <laughs> Just nothing but the word around me. And the scribes questioning with them. Now verse 15, and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him and he asked the scribes what question he with them now i'm led by god to stop for a minute because scribes were the teachers of the law these are the people that when a person was giving them something to write the scribes were the one that wrote it so they were professional writers and by them writing and being teachers of the law their writing encouraged them or equipped them to be very understandable and articulate about what they were writing so it is not surprising that the scribes would question his disciples and it's not odd that jesus would ask the scribes verse 16 what question ye with them? He's saying, what are you asking them? Verse 17, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Write that down, because remember, we're dealing with demonology in this chapter, okay? He said, his son has a dumb spirit. Dumb meaning he couldn't speak, okay? And wheresoever, verse 18, he taketh him, meaning that spirit, he teareth him. That means he throws him all over the place or dasheth him. 
and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, meaning that man, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Remember that. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind. Stop for a minute. Now, I know many of the ministries y'all go to, the leader always says, what? You can't do this or that? Or oh, the Bible says that they only come out by fasting and prayer. Or the Bible says that, that some only come out by fasting and prayer. Or the Bible says that all come out by fasting and praying. That's, that's a lie. That's, that's not what the scripture says. Look at the verse. That's why I asked you to have your Bibles. Verse 29, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This kind, he said. Verse 30, let's go on and let's just read this and up to verse 32. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, excuse me, no, let me go back to verse 30. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. Put a bookmark there if you have one, because this is our base text. And now I'll turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Because we're going to grab something from there right quick. That's going to be very powerful and very important to what we're dealing with this evening. Ephesians chapter 6, let's notice uh, verse 11 and 12. Now, I suggest you strongly read, I strongly suggest you read verses 1 through 9 so that you can walk up to this verse in your spare time. And verse 10, where Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then in verse 11, we're going to pick up here. He says, Put on a whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, we're going to really dig into this. So I want you to pay attention to this. I highlight it, underline it, circle what we get ready to say right here so you can understand it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's important that you understand that. 
In the Greek it says blood and flesh, but here in the English it says flesh and blood. But against, now this is four classes of demons. It's important to write this down because after we walk through this today, this is going to help your prayer life. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Or in the Greek it says heavenly places. Now again, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and false and wrongs. Thank you for preparing the table. Thank you for joining us together. Thank you, Lord, for getting our attention. Now feed us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> feed us. And then give us the victory. Show us how to get the victory. You've given us the land. Show us how to possess it. In Jesus' name, make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word and feed me also. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. I know many people say in Jesus' name, but his name don't start with C-H. So I have to say Jesus or Yeshua. In his name, I have to close the prayer because if it's not closed in Jesus' name, it's not official. If you're asking for things and it's not in Jesus' name, don't expect it to happen. Write this down, John chapter 14, verse 13. He said, let's go to verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall, excuse me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Some people think that means you're going to do better work and more work than Jesus by the word greater. Get out of the English, go into the Greek. It don't mean that you'll do greater by quality. It means that instead of him doing it alone, many of us that believe us on him, he said, verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And many more of you will be doing what he do. If you believe on him, his word, him. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. In the Greek, in the beginning was Theos, the Logos was Theos. He was with him from the beginning. Everything that was made, he made. If you believe on him, then what he does, you'll do also. And he said, because I go unto my father. Because when he go to God, when he goes to the father, when he went back to heaven, he gave gifts unto men and he interceded for us. Then he said in verse 13, verse 13 and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So it has to be done in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. If you don't mind, just follow me there. Join me there, actually. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. Scripture says, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, that's Sil uh, uh, Silas and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea. Some people say, well, the Bible says that in him is yea and nay. That's not what it says. That's whoever told you that, they, they gave you a bum steer. That's why when you use it, it didn't produce no fruit. Look at verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Amen means I agree. 
So in Jesus' name, it's done. And in Jesus' name, we agree. Remember, Scripture says the devil, we overcome the accuser of the brethren by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What testimony? When God tells you he's going to do something, when he reveals to you that he's going to do something, you prophets and prophetesses, when God show you dreams and you see a vision of something happening, it's going to come to pass. See, there's a difference between a, a dream and a vision. The dream is a warning or a message. But the vision is when God open up heaven and allow you to see what he has declared and decreed in the heavenlies, in the third heaven. Now, I know that there's a lot of people try to be deep and have all this authority and they declare and decree so much, but you can't do that because the only one that can declare and decree a thing is God. You got to understand that. If not, the enemy will be able to bamboozle your mind and have you thinking that God is going to change things that God is not going to change. The enemy will have you thinking that God is going to give you things that he's not going to give you. The enemy will have you thinking that God put you in an office of ministry that God didn't call you in. Yes, he might have said ministry, but the office. Did he? Did he? Be careful. Real quick, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 18 or write it down. And we'll get ready to get back into Mark 9. We haven't left it. The Holy Ghost is leading me to go this way and I got to go as he say. In verse 19 of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's go back to verse 18. Yes, Deuteronomy 18 verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name I will require it of him. Verse 20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. He'll be separated. Or oh, he in the, in the Old Testament, God said die. He meant it. This was physical death. Because that prophet was already spiritually dead. But thank God even now for grace and mercy because he's given people time to get it right. That means you false prophets. That proper lie, you Facebook movie stars, you have a chance to get it right. Verse 21, and if thou shalt send thine heart, how shall we? Let me read verse 20 again, said the Holy Ghost. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or thou, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Here we go again. And then God said in verse 21, And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? A lot of you need to hear this. Because people have been telling you that God is going to do this. That God is going to do that. That God has said this. And that God has said that. Many of you have been advised to pray about a certain thing. And many of you have been advised to look forward for a certain thing. Some of you haven't even caught that every year there's some foolish prophet or prophetess or Jezebel spit it or Ahab spit it that's telling you this is your year. Every year they tell you that and it has not been your year yet. God said. God said. And if thou say in thine heart, meaning in your spirit, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Verse 22, God said, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not. This is the condition. This is the proof. God said, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass. 
if it don't follow the word or nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but my gum just fell out of my mouth. The prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shall not be afraid of him. So God is saying, don't chew no gum, then let me put it down. Because I will tell you the truth, the gum <laughs> is almost like a security blanket for me, somewhat. Let me sit this in here. Thank you, Jesus. If y'all saw that, I know some are probably cracking up, because if it was me, i crack up too. <laughs> but God says, thou shall not be afraid of him. That means don't reverence them. Don't, don't lift them up. You know the false prophets that are out there, and some of y'all say, well, we, I know some, but I can't say their name, but those of us that are apostles, <laughs> God has called us and given us a bold spirit. I'm going to mention some names. Jordans, Holmes. <laughs> Do we got to go national? Bynum, Jake's, Dollar. McCullough, Myers. There's a lot of them out there that are telling you, Osteen, that God said. Geno Jennings, who says that God never called a woman in ministry, and then he stands and hit the podium like he didn't prove the point. The only point that he proved is he's off. Tony Smith, him too cussing in the pulpit these people you can't listen to because if Jesus was standing in the earth realm he would not be talking like them if he promised you something saints you're going to get it if he reveals something to you it's going to come to pass so we're dealing in this earth realm four classes of demons principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places and the Lord said let's go this way we're going back to Mark 9 but first let's fix our plate with Ephesians 6 the principalities are under Satan. Those are high-ranking demons. Those are his first line of defense. The Greek word is arche. It's used 58 times in the New Testament, and it's from the Greek word archomai, which means to commence or begin. Therefore, arche means a commencement or chief in various applications of order, time, place, or rank. Principalities are chief demons. Then the next ones are the powers. They execute the program of Satan. The Greek word for powers there is exosia which is used 103 times in the New Testament and is from the Greek words exesti or exestine, which also is exon. Three Greek words that mean the same thing. And this word exousia are from those three words in the sense of ability, that is, and means privilege. In other words, force, capacity, competency, freedom, or objectively mastery, superhuman, authority, jurisdiction, and more. Powers have the jurisdiction and the authority to do what they do. Don't get it twisted, my brethren. No demon, no demon. No demon, no demon is operating outside of their privilege or their position or their lane. 
some of you might understand, or their place. Why? Because Satan runs a very organizational government, which reminds me, the thought that God gave me for this lesson is there is a strategic government that is against you and you and me for life if you are really saved. The title is <laughs> On Your Mark, Get Set, Get Him. This information God is going to reveal to you right now, after tonight, in your prayer life, on your mark. Get set. Get them. If your children are wayward and going through problems and you don't know how to fight, after listening to this and following me and walking with me in the scripture, on your mark. Get set. <laughs> Get them. Some of you, God is standing there and you say, Lord, why haven't you moved? And God looking at you going, on your mark. Get set. Get him. Some of you, God have paused. He said, on your mark, get set. Angels are in heaven waiting to come to your aid. Demons are standing around looking, trying to figure out why did God say that? Because they hear God's voice. They also see angels. So they're wondering, wait a minute, something is shifting in the spirit realm concerning so-and-so. You, 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 and me. Something is, is happening, shifting, concerning them. They, oh, I've been able to turn up the heat, but it hasn't broken. What's going on? Why haven't they folded? It's because God said, on your mark. Get set. And after this lesson, he's going to say, get him. And then you use the word to defeat your enemy. But first, you have to know about your enemy. We talked about the principalities. They're under Satan. We talked about the powers. They are the exousia of the hellish realm. Then there's the rulers, which in the Greek the word is cosmocrator and is used one time in the New Testament, which is right there, Ephesians 6, verse 12. And cosmocrator is from the Greek word cosmos, which cosmos means orderly arrangement, in other words, de decoration. By implication, it means the world in a wide or narrow sense, including its inhabitants, literally or figuratively, which figuratively is connected to morally. The world. Cosmocrator means a world ruler, an epithet of Satan. The word epithet means a descriptive phrase, a nickname, a moniker, a title, or a name of Satan. Cosmocrator is used only here, Ephesians 6 and 12, in the New Testament. The next class of demons are spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual is from the Greek word pneumaticos which is used 26 times in the New Testament and means non-carnal. In other words, humanly, which is eugenically or socially, meaning that it's not human. It's not human. It's not social. It's not human. Then it says in the dictionary that these are ethereal, meaning, as opposed to gross, which gross here don't mean what you think it means in English, but in the dictionary it means undisguised or unconcealed. In other words, pneumaticos does not mean anything human or unconcealed. So you can't look at a person and say you're a devil because they're not. You can't look at your relative and say, you're a devil. You can't look at your spouse and say, you're a devil. You can't look at your children and say, y'all ain't nothing but devils. You can't even look at the unsaved and say, y'all are nothing but devils. Because these demons are not unconcealed. 
they're not socially recognizable by us. But pneumaticals, demoniacally speaking, is a spirit. Pneumaticals always connotes the ideas of invisibility and of power. That's why it says not unconcealed because pneumaticals is spiritual and it's concealed. This is where we get the word pneumonia. You can't see pneumonia, but you sure can catch it. It does not occur, pneumaticals, in the Old Testament or in the Gospels. It is, in fact, an after Pentecost word. Why? Because the Holy Ghost, who is a spirit, he's an intellectual spirit. He is God. His whole operation is spiritual. His nature is spiritual. He is spirit. And he ministers to us and deals with us in and through our spirit. You can only worship God in spirit. I know some of y'all say, well, I didn't thought of prayer and worship God in my mind. No, you can't do that. You can love God with your mind. You can think on uh, lovely things and things uh, uh, of that are of good rapport and so forth. But you don't worship God with your mind. So some people say, well, what about people that are, that are laying in the bed on a life support ma uh, machine or that are brain dead or that can hear but can't speak? God raises up intercessors to verbally put in the earth realm what this person is doing in their mind. Jesus did it too when the scripture says that the Pharisees and them were thinking certain things. And Jesus said, why are you thinking so and so and so? He put it out there in the earth realm. So that it could be visible. In John chapter 4 verse 24 when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. He said God is a spirit. Capital S. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well what is the truth? John chapter 17 Verse 17, Jesus, when he was praying to himself, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You can only worship God from your spirit according to the word of God, which is the truth. In the book of John, chapter 5, verse 39, none of this is written down. In chapter 5, verse 39, here's what Jesus said search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me the scriptures the word the word of God the sword of the spirit spiritual wickedness Spiritual, again, is from the word pneumaticals. Wickedness here is from the Greek word panerea, which is used seven times in the New Testament, and it's from the Greek word paneros, which paneros means hurtful, in other words, evil. So panerea in the Greek means depravity, especially malice and you know malice is the intention or desire to do evil panerea also means plots sins wickedness and lastly this part high places the greek word eporaneous is used 20 times in the new testament and means above the sky it also means in heaven one times because eporaneous is used uh, 30, uh, 20 times in scripture, one times it means heaven, two times it means celestial, which is spiritual, and 16 times it means heavenly, and one times it means high. So this consists of a spiritual host of wickedness in high places. These four classes of demons 
are who are attacking us. Your children are out in the street because of spiritual wickedness. Pneumaticals, demons, Ponorea that are out roaming the earth and seducing our children. One of the reasons why the ministries are not able to grow is because these demons that's walking the earth have crept up in the church and got into the bodies of men, of women, of children, and have infiltrated various positions in the place of worship. And the bad part of some of the saints can't tell the difference between the real and the fake. Then God has some people there that he has revealed what's going on. Those are the ones that the leaders look at and say, oh, I see an anointing on you. I know that God is with you. But sit down and shut up until I tell you to move. And those are they that sit down. Why? Because they've been beat up by scripture to a point of thinking that you must honor those that you know are wrong. But you should God only has you there, and they don't know this, but God only has you there so that that building stays afloat, meaning his judgment won't hit that building as long as you are there. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, his judgment won't hit that building. But angels are ready at any time to come in there and turn that place upside down. The moment God tells you to leave and you're gone, you'll realize that ministry has fallen. There are some there that God has cut the ministry off at the head. The pastor or the first lady, or the co-pastor, which none of this is in scripture. Uh, uh, co-pastor, that's, that's not in scripture. You don't see in a five-fold ministry. Look, look at Ephesians chapter 4, and I, I have to tell the truth, because if I don't, God is going to hold me accountable, and I do fear him. Ephesians chapter 4, verse not. let's go back to verse 7. But to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There's some people that say, well, God haven't caught everybody in any of the fivefold ministry. That's a lie and that's an uneducated person. Don't listen to them. Why? Because if God caught anybody in ministry, in a position of leadership, it is only going to be in one of those five offices. Watch. But to every one of us, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, the gift that he's given you. Verse 8, wherefore, meaning therefore, he saith, when he, Jesus, ascended up on high, he, Jesus, led captivity captive. He led captivity captive, or a multitude, it says in the Greek, of captives. So those that have died and those that have went to Abraham's bosom, when he, scripture says, ascended up on high, he led all of them. Those that were captive in Abraham's bosom by death, he led those that were captive as his captives. And when he went back on high, he gave gifts unto men. Verse 9, now that he ascended, this is verse 9 of chapter 4 of Ephesians, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Meaning this is the same one that first went down and then went up. He that descended, see, verse 10, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, because there's three heavens. When you look outside, that's the first one. Space is the second one where demons occupy 
and, and, and spiritual wickedness are high places, that's the high places in space. That's why people see uh, uh, what they call UFOs, unidentified flying objects. That's where they see all this activity going on. Even when they look up, they just see, oh, it's a full moon. There's problems. Oh, my goodness. Why is everything? It's, it's a bad atmosphere. In the second heaven, demons operate. The third heaven is where God lives and his angels and where Hebrews talks about us entering into his rest. That's where the departed saints are not looking down, not walking around heaven right now, not fellowshipping with God. They have not received their reward, but they are resting before God. They labored here on earth, and when they left, saved, they're resting. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time. When the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. I just thank you for all that I have in you and all that you are in my life for all that you've done for thy servant Lord you're just so wonderful you're just so wonderful I can't think of how else my life would be without you as long as I have Jesus I have a satisfied mind. this is my prayer sometimes I
say.